Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture. So we have seen relation on a set A onto itself. Okay, that is a relation from A to A itself. Now, when you're talking of this kind of a relation, there are three important terms to be discussed. What are they? The first one, reflexive. A relation can be reflexive in nature. It could be symmetric in nature. Or it could be transitive in nature. So in the coming lectures, we will talk about reflexivity, symmetricity, and transitivity in detail. Today, I will focus on reflexive relations. The term reflexive comes from reflex. Now, what do we mean by reflex? Reflex means to be the same. Reflex means to be the same. So when we talk about reflexive relation, we mean that any x that you pick from the set A, x should be related to x itself. In case x is related to x itself, then we would say that this relation R is reflexive in nature. That is x comma x, the ordered pair belongs to the set R. It's easy to visualize if you take R as a relation equal to. If equal to is the relation, then I can say one comma one belongs to R because one is equal to one. So equal to is a reflexive relation. Let me take a more general example. Let's take a set A and A is, A, A contains four numbers, one, two, three, four. Now let me take R as the set of one, one, two, four, three, three, four, one, four, four. And let me ask you a question. Is R reflexive? If this is what R is, is R reflexive? One, one is there. One is related to one. One, one is there. 2, 4 is there, we're not bothered about it because uh, we are looking at reflexivity. 3, 3 is there, 3 is related to 3 itself. 4, 1 is there, we're not bothered about it. 4, 4 is there, which means 4 is related to itself, but 2, 2 is not there. 2 is a part of this set. 2, 2 does not belong to R. Therefore, this relation R is not reflexive. So in that sense, if you uh, understand what reflexivity is, reflexivity means that you got to have all the diagonal elements. Diagonal as in 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Other things can also be there, but these elements should be there in the set R, which is telling you the relation. Let's take another example, R dash. If R dash is a relation which contains 1, 1, 3, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, and 4, 4. I'm going to ask you the same question again. Is R dash reflexive in nature? Absolutely yes, because I have 1, 1. I have 3, 3, I have 2, 2, and I have 4, 4. And these were the four elements. 1, 2, 3, 4 are four elements in A. So R dash is clearly reflexive. Yes, 3, 2 is present here. 3 comma 2 is present here, but we're not bothered about it as far as uh, reflexivity is concerned. What are we bothered about? We are bothered about that x is coming on to x itself. And that's happening. So yes, this is a reflexive relation. Let me ask you an interesting question. Suppose we define R, the relation R, I'm quoting is, uh, it as R phi in the subscript because I'm taking this set to be phi. Is this a reflexive relation? If I give you the set of relation as a null set, is it reflexive? And the answer to this question is no. For a simple reason, the pairs, the diagonal pairs, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, none of them belong to R phi because it's a set of no elements at all. Let me also define another relation for you. Let's take R A. 
Now, when I say R A, subscript A, I'm talking of the relation wherein, wherein, wherein the set is A cross A, that is the set of all Cartesian products. In the set of all Cartesian products, you will have all sort of elements in there, starting with 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 3, then 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, and so on and so forth. Definitely, it will contain the diagonal elements 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Everything would be there because it consists of all possible Cartesian product, right? All possible Cartesian products are, are there. Ordered pairs are there. So therefore, all of the required diagonal entries, that is, all the ordered pairs, x, comma, x, are present in this set Ra. So therefore, reflexive. This is what reflexity means. Reflexivity, there comes another term, which is being irreflexive. A set could be irreflexive or anti-reflexive. What would that mean? So R is said to be, a relation R is said to be irreflexive on A if for any entry A belonging to the set A, the diagonal ordered pair A comma A should not be a part of the relation set R. In case that's happening, then you say that the relation is irreflexive. So let us take certain examples to clarify this concept. To be the set which contains 1, 2, 3, 4 as the elements. And let's define first relation R as a set of 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Now, what is the question that I'm asking you? Is R irreflexive? The answer to this question is... No. Why? Because I can clearly see that R consists of diagonal pair 2, 2. Because R consists of 2, 2 and 3, 3, it is clearly not irreflexive. What do we require for, a, for R to be irreflexive? We require that for any A belonging to the set A, A comma A should not be a part of R. But here we have 2, 2 and 3, 3 in R. Again, defined on A, R dash consists of 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 4. If this is my set R dash, the question again is, is R dash irreflexive? And the answer is yes, it is irreflexive. I can call it irreflexive because there does not exist any A belonging to the set A such that a A belongs to R dash. That is for any A that I pick, not even a single pair, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 is a part of this. That's what you want for irreflexive. So this relation R dash is irreflexive. Now coming to the next example, I'm quoting R phi to be the relation, the set phi, which consists of nothing. Is phi, is this relation, is this relation irreflexive? Absolutely, it is ir irreflexive. Why? Because it does not contain any pair, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Not even a single pair, uh, diagonal pair is a part of this set. It doesn't contain any element for that matter. But whatsoever, the pairs that we don't want, the ordered pairs, the diagonal ordered pairs, we do not want that to be in the set and that's happening. And therefore, it is irreflexive. Let me now take R A as a relation, which is giving you the set of all possible ordered pair, A cross A. Is R A irreflexive? The answer is this time, no. Because when you talk about A cross A, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4, 4, they all belong to A cross A. And hence, this is not an irreflexive relation. So 
what we have understood today in this lecture is that what, when is a relation reflexive and when is a relation anti-reflexive. For reflexivity, we require all possible diagonal pairs to be in the relation. And for anti-reflexive, we require that not even a single diagonal ordered pair should be a part of the relation. Let me give you a mathematical example of reflexive relation and anti-reflexive relation. So for example, we take the set A to be one, two, three, four, as we have been taking. Now relation R from A to A itself. In case I take the relation greater than or equal to. Now greater than or equal to would consist of two is greater than one, greater than or equal to, two is equal to two, one is equal to one, and so on and so forth. You can create a set of, uh, you know, ordered pairs, which would include equal to cases as well. So greater than or equal to, in that sense, is a reflexive relation, because it does relate the number to itself. It's greater than or equal to. And the moment I take strictly greater than, you will not get even a single pair. If this is your R, then not even a single pair, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, could be a part of R. So they all do not belong to R. Therefore, this relation will become irreflexive. Thank you.